Matthew from fiberglasssupply.com here. In this video, we are going to show you how we glass a butt joint for a stitch and glue boat. We start out by test fitting and cleaning up the joint. Uh, so as you can see in this case, this one doesn't quite match up. Uh, the pieces are backwards. So we're going to flip that around and get them matched up. If there's any shavings or any sawdust or any uh, thing hanging on there, we'll clean it up with the sanding block. The nice thing about that I like about butt joints is they're pretty actually easy to line up. In this case, you just check the edges and the corners and make sure they're good to go. I'll use two inch masking tape and I'll pull tight on that masking tape so it sucks the joint together. I'll put a number of pieces uh, across the joint at 90 degrees and that pulls that nice and tight. And then I'll do one piece across the joint uh, you know, at the opposite 90 so it goes along the joint to cover that up and so that it doesn't get epoxy leak through to the other side and create a mess on your plywood. So now that I have those uh, 90 degree ones done and it's pulling that joint tight we're going to put one across there and press everything down nice and tight. You do want to make sure you get it down nice and tight otherwise the epoxy will leak under there. So now that I've done that one uh, I'm going to flip that panel over and if you're real careful that panel will flip nicely you shouldn't have any problems if it's a big panel you might want to get somebody to help you uh, but it holds together pretty well we'll get that lined up we do have plastic on the floor in case there's some leakage or anything in this case we're doing it on a concrete floor uh, so what we'll do later on is we'll weight those down to hold them in place if we're doing it on a wood floor we could actually screw them in place or nail them in place and we'll do the other side panels. This particular boat has a bottom and two side panels that need to be scarfed or joined together. Uh, in this, once we have that done, we're going to jump over and cut our fiberglass tape. Uh, we'll cut that to length. I usually cut it either right to the exact length or about a quarter inch under. You want it to go all the way out to the edge even though once it's in the boat it really shouldn't matter because of the way the joints will be um, but before you get to the boat it'll help hold everything together better if it goes all the way to the edge so we're just measuring have already measured the boat and are now measuring the fiberglass tape pieces and cutting those out we're going to put peel ply over the tape and the peel ply what that does is gives us a nicer finish and it smooths down the edges so there's less sanding and fairing to do so i'm going to cut the peel ply pieces right now uh, to go over that you want to cut those uh, a little oversized and it really doesn't matter if they're a lot oversized that's great uh, but i would probably go at least one inch on each side bigger uh, and, and like I said, you could really go a little bit bigger than that and it won't hurt you. Too small is not good. Too big is okay in this case. Once we have the peel ply uh, all cut out, we'll move over to our laminating station. Uh, we typically will just cover one of our tables with some plastic and laminate on that. We don't actually do the lamination on the part itself. Uh, it's cleaner to do it off part and then put it on the part. So we have a table here with some plastic on it. Uh, we'll wet that tape out and I'll get some epoxy on there and spread it out and just kind of let nature take its course and soak in. While it's soaking in, I'll jump over to the boat and pre-wet the joint and make sure I have epoxy uh, between the two edges of the plywood. I have not really ran into any issues with starving, but uh, some people uh, recommend pre-coating uh, a couple of times or once before wetting out and, and letting that set up and then doing your wet out on the end grain uh, where it could suck in more epoxy, but I have not seen an issue. Uh, but I'm just mentioning that in case you want to do it. So I'm going to jump over here and saturate that joint and pre-wet the wood. So I pick up the panel a little bit to open that joint out and then work the epoxy in with the brush. In this case we're using four inch tape and I think I was using a two inch brush and so then I'll just brush down along each side of the joint with some epoxy to pre-wet pre the wood <clears throat> before putting that saturated tape on there. And I 
wish we could speed things up in real life like you can in a video, but here we go uh, in high speed, getting those all wet out. And we've come back over the table and I'm gonna just work the excess epoxy off of that tape. Um, while I was over doing the rest of it, the tape wet out nicely. Uh, so just get the excess off of there and then go put it in place. You could use a bubble roller here to get out any bubbles, but honestly the squeegee is gonna work fine um, or you can use a brush to, to work it. Uh, normally I would not also work in sandals, um, but it, this was summertime on the weekend when I came in to do this, and that's what I was wearing. So, uh, But you want to keep the epoxy off your skin. It, it's a you know, potential health issue. You can become uh, sensitized to it and then allergic to it. And one of the easiest things to get epoxy on is your feet. And so again, I generally wouldn't recommend wearing sandals. So I've dropped that saturated cloth on there. If it's a longer seam um, or something bigger, you can also roll that tape up and then take it over and, and roll it out in place. If you're gonna do that though, don't roll it up until you're ready to move it. Uh, because if you roll a bunch of them up and you're off working on something for a bit, uh, they will get hot as they begin to cure and, and go off too fast. So. Uh, but if you leave it out flat, you'll have more working time, and then you know once you need to move it, you can just roll it up and then unroll it in place. So I'm placing the peel ply on. Uh, with the peel ply, you want to make sure it's saturated out all the way, and it's saturated past the edge of the the uh, tape, and that will give you the nice little transition from the edge of the tape to the wood. Once you've got the peel ply saturated all the way out, the next thing to do is place plastic over the joint. And then, again, because we're on a concrete floor here, what we're going to do is put weight on top of it to hold those joints flat. Uh, if we were on a wood floor, we could use nails or weight. We could do the same thing we're doing, um, or screws to, to hold the two edges so that they're flat. So I'm just going to place some wood on there and then put some weight. We tend to have a lot of buckets of resin, so we're going to use that, but you could use whatever you have for weight even five gallon bucks of water in them or something. Um, once that has cured, uh, we'll just remove all the boards. And if we're not gonna actually use it right away, I'll leave the peel ply on until right before we stitch the boat together. Uh, that just keeps that joint clean. Uh, but I'm gonna show you here, we're gonna pull that peel ply off and what we end up with is a nice transition at the edge, everything's down nice and flat and ready to go. In this case, we're gonna stitch this to the boat with just one side bonded, but if you gotta move it around a lot or you're concerned about it, you can flip it over, pull the tape, and do the same thing on the other side. Uh, for this particular boat, where these joints line up um, in the process and the fact that the outside gets completely glassed over, uh, we're only gonna do one side, and then when we stitch it together, have the tape side the masking tape side facing to the outside. As you can see, even with that one, only one side done, uh, the panel's pretty stiff, goes together nicely, and we've done a number of boats this way, and it's not an issue. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.